What's up folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and today we're continuing to talk about the June 2024 update to Warhammer 40k, which made some wild changes not only to the core mechanics, but also faction balance. So today we're going to be breaking down those balance changes and talking about the most nerfed and most improved factions in Warhammer 40k. Let's dive in and start with most nerfed. First, some dishonorable mentions, I guess. First off is Adepta Sororitas. Now, this faction wasn't actually nerfed. Their codex hadn't been competitively legal until the release of the Minotaur Field Manual update that came alongside this major update. However, based on the points that were printed in their codex, they did get a ton of points hikes. Now, for those who don't know, codexes in 40k usually come with points values printed in them. However, generally speaking, those factions are not legal to be played until an updated set of points values are released on Warhammer Community, at least competitively. This allows the design team to update the points values of these units on the fly, and based on additional experience and playtesting that occurs after the books are printed, they can tweak those values after the fact. However, if you buy the book day of, there are still points included for you to use until those values get updated. In this case, Adeptus Sororitas printed with dramatically lower points values than and what their units were worth and got basically across the board points increases compared to the printed values. That's not too uncommon for codexes right now, but it does make the faction look a lot worse than it did with its original preview. While I don't think it makes Sororitas competitively non-viable or anything, I think the faction's going to be just fine. I do think that there's going to be a little bit less of a variety in builds as maybe the Adepta Sororitas community was expecting. And with that, let's move on to factions that were actually nerfed in this update, starting with the least most nerfed armies. The first one is Grey Knights. Grey Knights were absolutely killing it in the pre-update season with insane mobility and thanks to their updates in January, their ability to actually deal some significant damage. And as a result, they did get some minor points hikes, mostly on their vehicles. Land Raider Redeemers and Nemesis Dread Knights were the big recipients, but we also saw an update to Castellan Crow, randomly. He did see some play in Purifier squads, but I'm not really sure why he copped an update. Overall, Granite Armies are going to be a little bit smaller moving on into the future, but I don't think it's going to be hugely transformative to them. Next up, we have Death Guard. Well, these guys got some minor points increases, especially on their more valuable characters. They also got a couple of points decreases, making some of their lesser played units cheaper, which might seem like a bit of a side grade. However, the nerfs to indirect fire included in the core rules update were absolutely brutal. Death Guard oftentimes relied on a trio of Plague Burst Crawlers sitting in the back of their army to provide a little bit of late game anchor and to put pressure on the enemy to move out of their own cover and actually engage with the relatively slow Death Guard Plague Marines. They could use Mortarian standing next to those Plague Burst Crawlers to ignore the penalty for firing indirectly and use stratagems and character synergies to make that indirect fire actually pretty reliable. However, now that indirect fire only ever hits on an unmodified roll of a four or higher, no questions asked, that's just always how it goes, those Plague Burst Crawlers are significantly less powerful. While there are going to be some stratagems that Death Guard do appreciate getting reworked, things like 1CP Heroic Intervention for their units carrying Foul Blight Spawn that allow them to heroically intervene for cheap and then fights first, they did catch the opposite end of a couple of stratagem reworks. Grenades are overall a little bit less powerful, which is unfortunate for them, and the Biologus Putrefire got a rework to its grenade ability. While this ability is kind of a side grade, I do think it is going to reduce the damage output output of a Death Guard army. Previously, Biologus Putrefires could duplicate the grenade stratagem even if it had already been used that phase, assuming that the Putrefire himself threw the grenade. That did impose some targeting restrictions, but allowed you to do a bunch of mortal wounds from a couple units of infantry running at your opponent. Now, the Putrefire only allows you to use the grenade stratagem for free, targeting his unit. That means that the Putrefire himself doesn't actually have to throw the grenade, which is a benefit, and you can do it multiple times, whereas previously you could only duplicate the stratagem once per game. Now a single Biologus Preacher Fire can potentially 
discount the grenade stratagem multiple times over the course of the game that is kind of unlikely to happen and overall is going to be less of a powerful spike of damage than the previous incarnation of the character. Moving up in the world, we've got Necrons. These guys were another faction that was dramatically overperforming in the last season, specifically their Canoptic Court builds. The Canoptic Court was a bit of a stat check that was doing very well, especially towards the end. The last couple of weeks, we've seen some Canoptic Court lists do exceptionally well in the metagame. And as a result, they got some points hikes. Both Wraiths and Doomstalkers got points increases as well as some minor stratagem reworks. Canoptic Court had the ability to apply a lone operative style effect to its Canoptic units that has now been nerfed to 18 inches rather than 12 alongside every other instance of that same effect. And Cosmic Precision randomly was rewarded not to work on monsters. This is so that you can't use it on Catan shards to drop them three inches away from enemies and take objectives and get to really awkward portions of the battlefield with those incredibly resilient combat units. And then moves us on to Astra Militarum. While the Militarum did get a ton of point cuts, they were kind of a mono build. You typically only saw one style of Astra Militarum army in the meta, which I imagine the design team was not too happy with. And that build specifically has been nerfed in a couple of different ways. First of all, you can no longer get two command point cost strats for free using Ursula Creed. She only discounts stratagem cost by one. And while she does work on a wider variety of stratagems, most of the time her ability was going to discount Fields of Fire, which granted an AP bonus to a bunch of indirect fire weapons, which were also similarly nerfed. On top of that, Imperial Guard were basically the army that most used effects that added units back into their rosters, namely the Reinforcements stratagem that has also been nerfed to only work once per game and no longer be repeatable, which makes a lot of very aggressive Militarum builds that were forcing specialist infantry like Kazarkin squads down your throat, or even and using it to regenerate melee units like Adeline Rough Riders, those can no longer rely on those regiment units to constantly be coming back into reserve. With all of these changes, Militarum is probably forced into a much more aggressive, heavy armor style build that is focuses on their very good tanks. And while I don't think that's going to be bad by any stretch of the imagination, I do think it is going to be a paradigm shift for the faction. Moving on, we've got Thousand Suns. Now, while Thousand Suns did get some points decreases, they actually got cheaper in some instances their entire army ability was reworked the army saw huge nerfs to how cabalistic rituals are declared not only do they get the downside of the new sequencing rules where the active player must declare all of their start of shooting phase effects before the defender gets to declare start of phase effects to react to them each ritual caster is now restricted to a single ritual each turn which dramatically reduces the number of rituals that the army can utilize and many of their strongest rituals were significantly nerfed. Temporal Surge, for example, cannot be targeted on the same unit multiple times, meaning that you can't triple or quadruple move a single unit with it. In addition, Twist of Fate can only be used in the shooting phase rather than being able to be used in any phase and only grants a flat AP bonus rather than ignoring in enemy armor saves. Now that does sound pretty bad, but I do think that the faction is gonna survive. And in addition to those points cuts, I do think that the new movement rules that allow round based models to rotate freely and also move through areas that may be too small for their physical model as long as their base can fit are hugely beneficial to characters like Magnus the Red and he is going to have a much easier time maneuvering around the battlefield. So it's not all bad in the planet of the sorcerers but casting your rituals is going to be a lot more annoying. Now staying on the Chaos Space Marine trend let's talk about Chaos Space Marines next. These guys were mostly the recipients of insane numbers of points increases. A lot of their army was was increased, especially Warp Talons. Now I have a whole video about exactly why Warp Talons were very stupid because they are no longer quite as good as they were. Not only did they get a significant points increase, but their ability was totally reworked. Now, instead of allowing the unit to go into reserve, as long as it had been eligible to fight that turn and was no longer engaged, allowing you to game it in multiple different ways, whether you use hit and run stratagems to fall back at the end of the fight phase or simply engage into fights where your opponent was forced to pull casualties away from the warp talons, allowing them to then warp strike away. Now the warp
Barb Talon unit must have destroyed an enemy unit. This means by definition that they had to have actually fought that turn and they had to be the one whose attacks killed the enemy, meaning that multiple Warp Talon units can no longer descend upon a single hapless target, use their combined attacks to kill them, and then both jump away. In that case, one of those Warp Talon units would be stranded. A pretty interesting change here. Definitely makes the Warp Talons less of a fire and forget missile. You have to use them a little bit more intelligently, and I do like to see changes like this occur. And I do think that the unit itself is still going to be viable, although at that new points value, you're going to see significantly less of them. Now, moving on to the second most nerfed faction in this update, Orcs. I had a whole extra video about Mega Knobs and how strong Mega Knobs were in a variety of Orc build, including both the Bully Boys and Green Tide detachments. And these guys got nerfed multiple different ways. Not only did they get a very hefty points increase, they also got a nerf to their Feel No Pain ability. Previously, they gained a four plus Feel No Pain during turns in which you had called the Wa in a Bully Boys detachment that allowed them to get two full battle rounds of a four plus Feel No Pain, which is incredibly strong. That was reduced to a five plus Feel No Pain and the Green Tide detachment was almost entirely reworked. It lost its passive saving throw rerolls and now only provides a stacking invulnerable save to boys units. In addition, Green Tide saw some other changes, including to the Go Get em stratagem, which is honestly probably fair. It's one of the most annoying and complicated stratagems in the game right now and is a little bit less powerful. While I don't think Orcs as a faction is going to be going anywhere, I do think that the Green Tide detachment is significantly less powerful to the point that we will likely not see it quite as much anymore. And the inclusion of Mega Knobs is questionable at best. If certainly dead in Green Tide, you may see them in Bully Boys, but they are expensive for a low attack volume unit, and it may be that we just see more regular knobs taken in their place. Fortunately for Orcs, they have an absolute bevy of detachments to choose from, so we may see some of the, their competitive archetypes move to some of their other detachments, such as War Horde, which has a tried and true track record of being pretty good. And last, but certainly not least, in the most nerfed category here, we've got Space Marines. This might be a little surprising to folks since Space Marines were generally not doing super well in the previous season, at least in terms of win rates. However, they did see a dramatic overperformance from some very specific detachments, one of them being Ironstorm Spearhead, which was absolutely nuked from orbit. It saw massive nerfs to not only its most powerful stratagem, Mercy's weakness, but also huge changes to the enhancements that make it so strong. Previously, it was able to provide overlapping auras of advance and shoot and lethal hits. Those have now simply become a single target effect, allowing them to supercharge one vehicle, but not affect a whole boatload of vehicles. Those are some pretty big changes. And on top of that, we also saw some points increases to staple units like the Gladiator Reaper, the Land Raider Redeemer, and awkwardly, the Gladiator Valiant probably the least played of the Gladiator trio. This is probably due to what we call in the server the Ogren effect, where the design team nerfs a unit that so sort of sounds like a unit that was played very often. The Gladiator Lancer is played all the time, that thing rules and is a very good long range gun platform for the faction. The Valiant is a short range gun platform that is significantly less consistent and doesn't see quite as much play, especially outside Ironstorm Spearhead or maybe Firestorm sometimes. So why the Gladiator Valiant was nerfed over the Lancer, I, I don't know, but it might be that somebody forgot which one was which. On top of that, some unit interactions for the faction were also nerfed. The Phobos Captain's redeploy, for example, was nerfed, making that guy functionally non playable. Eliminators alongside their Impulsor and their ability to double shoot, which was a fun interaction that we saw occasionally do well, but not all the time. That was also removed from the game. And non-compliant Space Marine chapters also got enormous hits. Non-compliant Space Marine chapters now have lists of restricted units that prevent their inclusion, making even non-vanilla Space Marine lists so much less flexible. Now, to be fair, in some instances, this is a very good change. It prevents you from doing things Things like, for example, taking multiple varieties of Gladiator or Repulsor inside a Black Templars list, allowing you to take four or five Repulsor Executioners, for example, because Black Templars have a bespoke version. Now Black Templars must 
only take their bespoke version, but they also lose access to things like librarians. Similarly, Space Wolves lose access to a bunch of units, including things like Apothecaries. Blood Angels were largely unscathed, and given that they only occasionally played an Ironstorm Spearhead, those guys are likely to see play and may end up as one of the better factions post-update. I do think that Vanilla Space Marines are going to struggle quite a bit after these changes, however. On top of that, we also saw some nerfs to those other non-compliant chapters. We saw factions like Space Wolves and Black Templars get some pretty hefty points increases, and while Dark Angels and Space Wolves both got buffs to their faction-specific detachments, the jury's still out whether those detachments are any good and whether those changes are going to meaningfully increase their win rate. Now that's a lot of negativity, so let's close out the video by talking about some buffed factions. Starting, of course, with honorable mentions. Tau belongs in here. They got some points decreases, which was nice for them. However, the Hammerhead gunship did get a small points increase, which was sad for them. Hammerhead is the backbone of many Tau firing lines right now, and uh, they're probably still going to play it, but they're just going to pay a couple of extra points for it. Now, moving on to actually buffed factions, World Eaters similarly got some very minor points cuts, but no nerfs on top of that. So they're going to have a couple extra points to play with, which is nice for them. Chaos Demons were the recipients of some nice quality of life changes. They got a cool rework to Shadows of Chaos, allowing greater demons to project an allegiance keyworded version of Shadow of Chaos around themselves, which allows monotheistic builds a little bit more variety, as well as turning on enhancement equipped greater demons throughout the entire game, rather than relying on control of objectives to gain the benefit from the enhancements that they paid for. This allows things like a great unclean one with the endless gift enhancement, giving him a four plus feel no pain to trigger that feel no pain all the time. It doesn't require him to be near Bellacor or a corrupted objective or within his army's sh shadow of chaos. Similarly, a Lord of Change with the Everstave is always going to get the benefits of the Everstave regardless of its position on the table. That makes Chaos Demons significantly more interesting and flexible. And on top of that, they also got some very minor points decreases and the new movement rolls are actually going to be huge for them, allowing them to rotate and move their larger units around the battlefield much more easily. That said, these are mostly just quality of life changes. I don't know if they're going to be wildly transformative to the faction, especially one that I don't know if is going to have the greatest time in the Pariah Nexus format. Now, moving on, I've jumbled two factions together here, which might be offensive to many players, but uh, if it is, I apologize. Both Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights were subject to basically the same update. Now, units with the Super Heavy Walker ability can move through terrain features greater than four inches in height. Previously, if a terrain feature had a section that was four inches or taller, they could not move through it, despite the fact that they had that Super Heavy Walker keyword. Now, that's no longer the case. They can bust through big walls and buildings with only a very small penalty, and they retain the other clause of that ability where they can move through smaller terrain features without penalty. So if you have a little four inch wall, they can bounce through that just as they could previously. But now, even if you have an infinitely high wall, they can burst through that too. The downside is that they have a small chance to battle shock themselves when jumping through walls, which I think is a really cool and interesting downside to have. It is certainly transformative to a unit to battle shock itself during your own turn, which can potentially grant your opponent control over objectives, for example. But Overall, this is going to dramatically improve the maneuverability of both of these factions. Now, I do think that Imperial Knights came out a little bit ahead here since they tend to bring a larger proportion of Super Heavy Walkers, and they also saw some changes to Canis Rex, not specifically to him, but to free stratagem abilities, allowing him to use stratagems for free regardless of their category. Previously, it could only be used on battle tactics, which basically restricted it to only being used on command rerolls, which was a little bit underpowered. Now he can do things like tank shot, and heroically intervene, as well as use command rerolls with impunity. Even better, knights saw minor points decreases as well, mostly to the lesser played heavy knights. Whether or not that moves them into the realm of playability, we'll just have to see. Now, moving on to some factions with enormous rewrites, Adeptus Mechanicus got huge buffs to their army ability, entirely changing who gets access to it and the effect that it grants you. They also saw huge statistical improvements across the board, with many of their weapons getting Getting updated profiles doing a lot more damage. The downside, of course, is that Adeptus Mechanicus points values have been increased. They're now paying more points for those units, but those units have access to better abilities and better weapons to use those abilities on. Ultimately, I think this ends up being a very nice quality of life change for Adeptus Mechanicus players who no longer have to rely on incredibly cheap and incredibly physically expensive models to remain viable. Instead, they can now play with more elite, slightly smaller armies, which definitely 
definitely makes the game a lot easier to get into. That moves us on to Adeptus Custodes. Custodes saw some very crucial rewrites to the detachment abilities of both their shield host and auric champions detachments. These were huge and dramatically improved the damage output of Custodes armies. Shield Host is able to now choose effects that it grants to its Martial Kata trained custodians every single battle round, rather than only once per game. And on top of that, Auric Champions now grants its Oaths of Moment style plus one to wound to any unit with an attached character rather than the characters themselves, dramatically improving the army's damage output. On top of that, they also saw some huge points buffs to very specific units. Units like Venatari Custodians getting a massive of points decrease means that the army is going to be able to take these maneuverable custodian infantry in large numbers and buff them with that improved damage from their new detachment abilities. We also saw some changes to core rules, things like devastating wounds, now converting into mortal wounds before it deals damage rather than simply being unignorable damage, means that you can use things like anti-mortal wound protection against them, which allows custodians to use stratagems like arcane genetic alchemy to protect themselves from devastating wounds, whereas previously they had no such damage defense. And now, last and certainly not least, the most buffed army for this update. And oh my god, is it an update? It's Tyranids! Let's talk about my buggy boys and how they're back in the game. After a couple months of being basically totally out of it, Tyranids have had enormous rewrites to how their synapse network works. It now can provide a passive strength buff to Tyranid units, and it imposes an additional leadership penalty when you are forcing shadow in the warp tests on your opponent if they are near synapse units. The army also saw some enormous buffs to the Crusher Stampede and Vanguard Onslaught's attachments, although it did see a minor nerf to Unending Swarm with its inability to now respawn units multiple times over the course of the game. The updates to detachments like Vanguard Onslaught allow more units to benefit from the detachment ability and stratagems and dramatically increase the amount of build variety within these detachments. These stratagems were all supported by Hive Tyrants, which previously were restricted to using their free stratagem auras on only battle tactics, which were kind of inconsistent within the codex, being able to use those on any stratagem is huge. And while the downside is that Tyranids can no longer duplicate stratagems as much as they could previously, Hive Tyrants being a relatively cheap way to generate two free stratagems for your army every battle round makes Tyranid armies ridiculously command point efficient. Even Swarm Lords saw some updates, getting a new Lord of Deceit aura, which for an aggressive melee character may be incredibly strong for him, especially when dealing with opposing enemy melee armies that are going to be trying to buff themselves with stratagems. They also saw some minor profile changes to weapons and a couple of abilities alongside keyword additions on many units. Not only granting some characters the synapse keyword, allowing them to project that plus one strength aura more consistently around the table, but they also saw an enormous number of data sheets gain the Vanguard Invader keyword, allowing them to synergize with Vanguard Onslaught. This is going to create a number of new builds with things like Molochs being able to use the Vanguard's upy downy stratagem to nuke enemy armies for mortal wounds multiple times over the course of the game and may have catapulted Tyranids into being maybe not the best army in 40k, but certainly a meta contender. And that's not even to mention that the new movement rules, Chaos Demons and to Magnus the Red, are incredibly good for monsters. Tyranids do have a lot of round-based units and especially large units with big wings and things that are going to absolutely love the new movement rules and how movement and terrain and movement and rotation interact. That makes moving these big monsters across the table much easier and is going to make Tyranids much, much nicer nicer to play in this new format. Could not be more excited, especially for the fact that Tyranids are a real faction now and not just a passive points scorer for team events. And with that, those are all of the most improved and most nerfed armies. So let me know down in the comment section if you thought I skipped out on any factions in this list. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports the channel, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subscribers. All you people are amazing and I love you. Remember to keep you classy folks and have happy wargaming.